you are tuned into Lemon Relax. Hey, you guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Let Me Relax. This is episode 12. In this episode, we're going to be discussing privilege, um, white privilege, light skin privilege, and mixed privilege. This video was, or video slash podcast, was requested by an old high school friend of mine who caught wind of the last episode, and she wanted to know my opinion on this. And um, thank you for reaching out. Thank you. It's good to know that people are listening. I mean, I see the views. You know what I'm saying? As far as Anchor goes, I see the views, too, on there. Um, and But it's nice to, you know, hear verbally that people are here for you. So with that being said, um, real quick, I hope y'all are doing all right. Black people, it's okay to, you know, not be okay in this situation. But try to, you know what I'm saying, cry, get it out. And even I ended up getting emotional on social media um, when I saw the video of them just driving through the protesters, literally vehicular manslaughter. So um, at any rate, with that being said, make sure you, you know, give your brain a mental break every once in a while. Um, I realize some of us are going back to work now. Don't be afraid to tell them, look, I need a day or two. Um, but with that being said, like me, I talked to my boss last week. I am on call for the week. If they need me, they call me. If they don't, I, I'm at home. And I'm binge watching and you watch at this point. <laughs> Which I will have a Rotten Tomatoes, um, the segment that I made back uh, a couple years back and did the review on the Dragon Ball Z movie. Um, I will be bringing that back and revamping that now that I've been able to binge watch more TV. Um, and that will be the next show that I um, review. So, with that being said, at any rate, on to the episode. Real quick, I got to give a clarification from last, um, from the last episode posted. In the part where I talked about the Dwayne, Dro- Dwayne The Rock Johnson playing John Henry, I accidentally said Henry Ford. <laughs> um, the automobile guy, <laughs> instead of John Henry. So, that is my bad. I made it a little bit late, and we all make mistakes, and I'm not, you know, shy of, you know... Saying that, you know, that was my bad. <laughs> so that was my bad. Two different people. <laughs> um, but at any rate, um, yeah, so I meant to say John Henry in that video uh, slash podcast. Um, now, moving on to the actual podcast, real quick warning. This episode may require some binary thinking. If you don't know what that is, pause the video slash podcast. Look it up. I am not dictionary.com. But with that being said, you know what I'm saying? If you know what it means move ahead so real quick I want to start off with the definition and then the origin of white privilege because that's the first one we're starting off with so white privilege refers to the societal privilege that benefits white people over non-whites very clear can, and concise and it can be structural it can be within the workplace it, well it is structural but it can be within the workplace it can be really can be just within existing in life. You know what I'm saying? The mere fact that they don't have to worry about if they're going to make it home or not when the policemen pull them over because they're not there to kill them. Um, so with that being said, uh, now moving on to the roots. It is rooted in European colonialism and also can be traced back to the Atlantic slave trade and the growth of the second British Empire circa 1783 so with that being said when people say this is just an american problem they're full of shit it's not and i'm glad to see all these countries excuse me uniting now granted i'm not gonna lie with all the protests that's going on some of these people could just be bored and ready to get the fuck out of the house because we've been stuck in the house for so while but at this point uh, protesters, protest, protesters are protesting period I'm, I'm i don't give a fuck about your motives at this particular point I know a lot of black people get hung up on that, but at this particular point, if you're getting the message out, get the fucking message out, <laughs> please, because we are dying, literally. We can't afford to be picky and choosy right now, especially when we don't even have our shit together as a community. But with that being said, we're not talking about us right now. That's the whole topic for a whole nother video. So with that being said, delving into white privilege, how it affects the everyday white person and white passing person. Um, you are automatically, when you are born white, you are automatically awarded a seat at the table, spaces that other people of color and black people, and yes, I'm going to use those interchangeably because they are not the same, are um, not given. 
opportunities, whether it be job, education, private school versus public school, you know, the whole six, nine. Um, and white passing people of color also benefit from the same system. You know what I'm saying? The same way they do the one drop rule. It was kind of like, and I seen somebody do a video on this on TikTok and it was really interesting. I never really thought of it like that. Um, but basically, you know, when it comes to Asians and, you know, some of the lighter skinned people of color, they give them a little bit of privilege, just enough for them to be able to pigeonhole us and say, oh, well, the Asians can do it. So you shouldn't have no problem. Oh, well, the Hispanics can do it. That look like more like a Evelyn Lozada than a Marla Negra, of course. But nonetheless, we're not ready for that conversation. <laughs> but the Hispanics can do it. So why you can't? You know what I'm saying? It basically gives them that leeway to do that. And which is also why I do not use people of color and black people within the same instance. Now, if they are black people of color, as in Afro-Latinas or Afro-Asians, and they actually own their black side, then, you know, that's a conversation we can have. But as far as white passing people of color, they're in a whole nother bracket on their own. Are they above white people? No. But are they able to take up some of the spaces that white people occupy? Yes. Especially if you have to look at them and they have to tell you, oh, I'm Hispanic. Oh, I'm this. So that conversation, you know, can be had on a whole nother, you know, vid uh, video. If need be, let me know down below if that's something you're interested in. But um, we're talking about visibly white people um, who, without a doubt, you know, benefit from the privilege wholeheartedly. So with that being said, um, I've already discussed, I'm going through the notes. I've already discussed how it affects non-black people and people who are not white passing. So um, I want to speak on how it has perverse white people's perception. Imagine that you were born with the world in your hands. You are the standard of beauty, the standard of what success looks like. You see yourself in every commercial, every ad, every movie, every TV show. And before people start to get disingenuous, validation, as far as promotion goes, does matter. That does contribute to how people look at themselves. Don't believe, please don't believe for a second, that all these plain Jane white people that are walking around, and there's nothing wrong with being plain Jane or average because most people are average looking. But please don't believe that they have all that self-confidence from their mommy and daddy. Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> you are sadly mistaken if that's what you believe. And let's not be stupid on purpose. Um, nobody is saying that white people do not have regular struggles such as, you know, deaths in the family, people falling ill cancer, you know, within certain family members. Everybody goes through that. That's not what we're talking about in this, so please don't try to pull that card. Um, and if you are a white man that sat here and built your company from the ground up, that's very cool. Guess what? You probably had access to loans that other black people and non-black people cannot get. You probably had access to, um, if you, you know what I'm saying, where a family member or your family member had cancer or had um, some sort of illness, you have access to medications. As I said earlier, the spaces that you are allowed in, although you may have those life struggles, they can put you up in the race. They can give you a horse up in the race, to put it symbolically speaking. And uh, even off of materialistic things, because privilege is not just a materialistic construct, even if you are at the bottom of the barrel of white people, you still are afforded the luxury of being treated like a human, viewed like a human. Even if people look down on you for your financial situation, they do that with everybody. <laughs> That's just, people do that, period. Excuse me. It's not anything to do with your race. You still don't have to worry about if you get pulled over, are you going to make it home alive or not? You still don't have to sit there and have conversations with your children about public perception, being aware and cautious at all times. Don't walk across this person's yard. Don't do this. Don't do that. You don't have to have those conversations with your children. So with that being said, the rabbit hole goes deep with white privilege. We could talk about that all day long, but I was requested to speak also on light skin privilege and mixed privilege as well. So moving on to black light skinned men and women and the privilege that they gain within the community. 
So I kind of broke it down into a pros and cons. And as I said earlier, binary thinking is needed for this episode. So some things that are pros in one sense may not be a pro in another sense. They may be a con. One thing that I know overlaps is um, starting with, well, let's start with women first and then we'll go to men. So light-skinned women, they are seen as the cream of the crop of the community They are able to thrive freely in their femininity. They are seen as dainty, often put over dark-skinned black women as the preferred black woman, AKA the safe black. Also due to lopsided promotion, they are often fetishized, which can lead to a false sense of confidence and appearance. Um, Like, just like how I brought up earlier, um, white people being the standard of beauty, a lot of them think they look a lot better than they are which there's nothing wrong with average, but most people are average. So that promotion, when you have lopsided promotion like that, it can cause you to feel yourself a little too much. (laughs) So um, also they have more access to opportunities within society and often they exercise those rights, sadly, some of them. So moving on from light-skinned men and women, the pros of light-skinned men. They are seen as the non-threatening or less threatening black compared to dark-skinned men, a.k.a. dark-skinned black men, a.k.a. again, the safe black. They are also seen as the quote-unquote prettier black man. Excuse me. But the cons of that are they are seen as less of a man, seen as soft, effeminate, again, the safe black, and that can be advantageous within dealing with police brutality you know, because like uh, most of the victims are black. They look like George Floyd. They look like the baby and black youngster. They don't look like me, which is why it would behoove dark skinned black women to, or not black women, but black men to not go at the people that you're going to want to represent you when it's time to fight for black lives. Because like I said, they really not killing men that look like me. Most of the people, when you see those say their names, they are not light skinned. Um, and that goes to show you white people know a difference. So for those of you who think white people view us all the same and try to put that blanket statement of we're all black, they all view us the same as if we need to care about how they view us. But nonetheless, that is not true. Hey, you guys, if you would like to hear the rest of this podcast, please check me out on anchor.fm, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all other podcasting platforms. Thank you for listening.